Following the previous episode on power distance in different cultures, in this episode we are going to discuss individualism and collectivism in world cultures and their influence in human behavior and life philosophy. And I repeat myself what I said in the previous episode as well that the more information we have about our targeted audience are better. So let's start. So what is individualism? In an individualist society, people tend to be self-reliant, independent and see social ties as impermanent or goal-oriented, thus temporary. People from individualist societies have self-concepts that are more focused on their own independence rather than interdependence. As a result, people from individualist societies tend to describe themselves in terms of their individual characteristics and unique personal traits. On other hand, the collectivist societies are largely structured around largely permanent in-groups and strong social bonds. In here, people tend to feel that they belong to a large group and the other members of the group look after them in exchange of their loyalty for the group. Now, let's have a look what are the notable behavioral differences in the people coming from these two different societies. The people coming from collectivist societies are very much much loyal to their own group. This is why they tend to become very exclusive as long as the other party doesn't share a common identity with them. In contrast, individualist societies tend to treat others as an individual without concerning any of their collective identities such as religious identity or national identity. Thus, individualist societies tend to become more inclusive than the collectivist societies. In collectivist societies, the use of first-person plural number or the use of word we is encouraged. However, in individualist societies, the first-person singular number, the use of word I is encouraged. In individualist societies, individuals seek for their own independence that can be financial, emotional or social independence. Whereas in collectivist societies, people seek for their interdependence in a certain group. It has also been noted that people from collectivist societies, they tend to become introvert, whereas the individualist people are likely to be more extrovert. In collectivist societies, showing sadness is encouraged and showing happiness is discouraged. In individualist societies, it's exactly the opposite. Showing sadness is discouraged and showing happiness is encouraged. People from collectivist societies, they also attach high importance on other people's opinion or face saving. This can be understood through a catchphrase in Indian context, Lok Kya Kahenge. In individualist societies, this situation is exactly opposite. People less care about others' opinion on individuals. In collectivist societies, we see that the younger generation tend to depend financially on the older generation. Whereas in individualist societies, self-supporting lifestyles are encouraged. In collectivist societies, we also see that social network is a primary source of information. Whereas in individualist societies, media plays a key role. Collective societies, they they share a strong bond within their family, hence has shown a lower rate of divorce. On the contrary, in individualist societies, people only tend to take care of themselves or their immediate family. The perspective on education in these two societies are also different. Education is seen as a learning how to do in collectivist societies, whereas in individualist societies, education is regarded as a learning how to learn. In collectivist societies, diplomas provide entry to high status groups. In individualist societies, diplomas are regarded as self-respect or their economic worth. Collectivist people are reluctant to mobilize, hence the rate of occupational mobility is lower. In contrast, in individualist societies, occupational mobility is always encouraged. Employees in collectivist societies, they pursue their group's interest. In comparison, in individualist societies, the employees will pursue the employer's interest only if it 
coincides with their own individual interest. It is also very prominent that individualist societies tend to become wealthier, whereas the collectivist societies are less wealthier than individualist societies. We will talk about it in detail in the next part of the video. Now we have a fair amount of information about the behavioral patterns in the people coming from collectivist societies and also coming from individualist societies. Now the question is, where could we see collectivist societies and individualist societies? Let's have a look. This map shows us which of the cultures tend to be more individualistic or collective. The deeper color represents more individualistic behavioral traits in the cultures in this map. However, it is better to mention here, individualism and collectivism traits of cultures could vary even in the same country by other social factors such as religion. For example, Muslim community tend to show more collective traits regardless of their geographic locations and even inside a country. You could pause the video here to have a better look on this map and to understand individualist and collectivist cultures scattered throughout the world. Now let's look at a few examples to find out some patterns which can be useful for our own communication strategy. The first example that I thought of putting here is a toothpaste commercial from the same brand which is Colgate in Australia which is an individualist culture and from India which is largely a collectivist culture. So let's have a look on both of the commercials and then try to draw some patterns if there are any. For as long as you remember, you've brushed all your teeth diligently. Mm -hmm. Twice a day, right? <laughs> but 80% of your mouth's bacteria aren't even on your teeth. 80%? Shocking, isn't it? That's why you need Colgate Total. It fights bacteria on teeth, tongue, cheeks and gums. So 100% of your mouth's surfaces get protected every time you brush. Colgate Total, for whole mouth health. And for an even healthier mouth between brushings, try Colgate Total Mouthwash. <laughs> <laughs> Amino Shakti Danto ko banai strong Kyoki jab khana thik se chabayenge Tabhi to milega sahi potion Jab mere dad strong Tum hai strong Koi get strong we could see the difference. The same brand approaches Australian consumers with an apple of individuality and independence. An individual brushing as a personal product, reflection of self-reliance, emphasis on the self-improvement and self-realization, emphasis on the benefits of the product to an individual. Whereas in the collective culture, the same product from the same brand becomes a family product. The appeal from the same brand to a collective society was about family and integrity, showing a mother and daughter are brushing with the product rather than an individual to showcase the sense of group well-being. They show their concern about others and support the society focused on interdependence. Moreover, they focus on group goals, in this case, to have stronger teeth. Now, let's take another example from tourism industries of different countries. So first, we will go to have a look at official tourism industry websites from two different individualist cultures. Randomly, we could choose Ireland and the USA. So first, we will go and have a look at the official website of Irish tourism, which is called Discover Ireland. And the official tourism website of the USA is called Visit the USA. We could see their national official websites mostly promote solo or small group traveling. They also highlight the possible activities for the individuals or small group, demonstrating strong sense of individualism. Now let's have a look at official tourism industry websites from two collectivist cultures. In contrast, when we see on the counterparts of the collective cultures, the counterparts show big groups, people, different cultures, possibilities with your family or bigger groups where the collectivism is much more stronger than individualism. 
the possible activities which are designed only for big groups. So we could also see the appeal to two different groups of people are very different. The collectivist approach includes more people and the possible activities are designed only for a big group whereas the appeal from individualist cultures and their possible activities are designed either for individuals or for a small group. We have seen two different industries and their communicative approach towards the people coming from two different societies. Besides that, we could also see other patterns in two different cultures. One of the patterns we could also see the difference in their food habits. There are examples of different layers of individualism and collectivism caused by food habits of the region, which originates from the agrarian society. For example, paddy rice cultivation demands an intense cooperation of many. This helps growing a strong sense of clans, which is a particular kind of collective psychology. In comparison, if we see wheat cultivation permits independent nuclear households and fosters more individualistic psychologies. For instance, if you see most of the Japanese foods are made of rice, no wonder Japan is a highly collective society. Individualism and collectivism survey in northern China, which is a wheat growing area, and in southern China, which is a rice growing area, also confirms two different attitudes of people in the same country according to their food habits. Now let's talk about something really very interesting. What are the benefits of both of the societies? Let's start with collective societies. Collective societies are better at works which need a collective involvement. A recent bright example would be COVID-19 pandemic handling. Let's have a look at this map. This is the map of COVID-19 active cases as per the data on 25th June 2022. But interestingly, this map resembles the map of individual cultures. Of course, the health infrastructure is one of the deciding factors to fight against any pandemic. However, there are more than one perspectives to look at this situation. Due to the nature of COVID-19 virus, in order to stop the rapid speed of spreading the virus, we need the collective approach where a large number of people agreed in strategies like lockdown, mass vaccinations to constrain the virus. Hence, the collective cultures were happen to enjoy the fruit of the sense of collectivism, whereas the individualist cultures happen to suffer from their own nature, where the traits of individual independence go against the lockdown, opposing the mandatory vaccination rules, also go against individual choices, which played a negative role for individualist cultures to constrain the virus. And this is exactly what's seen on this map. This is why this map resembles with the individualist map as well. I will show you another world map but this map is of national economies across the world. Do you think this map also resembles the first map of individualist cultures? If your answer is yes, you are actually right. Very interestingly, this map also resembles the map of individualism and collectivism. And now the question is how? How come the individualist cultures became richer than the collectivist cultures? And even more importantly, how come these individualist cultures became individualist? I have already explained it in this video. I will see you there.